Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Logan and there are a lot of options on the market right now for devices that do nothing more than hook up to your TV or projector and let you watch movies and TV shows. At this point, the bar is pretty low and even the cheapest TV boxes are probably gonna offer a halfway decent Android TV experience. But with that said, today I wanted to look at one of those devices that's trying to compete above everyone else. This is the $400 Dune HD Pro One 8 K Plus, and that's the only time I'm saying its full name in the video, which was sent over to us for review by Dune. And like the Nvidia Shield, it's an Android TV box that's going to give you access to all the popular online streaming services you may or may not be subscribed to right now, as well as your own collection of locally stored media or content served through your network from a media server. But the Doom promises a lot of other benefits over the Shield, and my mission in this video is to see if they're offering enough added value to justify that $200 markup over the tried and true solution, because it looks like they've added a lot of features to this that you just can't really get anywhere else, at least this combination of features. And for the right person, the Dune might be an excellent choice. So. With all that out of the way, let's actually take a look at this box and see what you get. The Dune 8K comes in a pretty nice package and provides some documentation along with the player itself and all the usual accessories like a Bluetooth remote, HDMI cable, and an international power adapter which can take a standard US plug. Batteries are also included. And the Dune 8K player is actually a really nice piece of hardware. The housing is made entirely out of aluminum, and it has a positive amount of heft to it. But more importantly, this should also help to keep the S928X ARM SoC fairly cool, since the entire chassis is used as a heatsink for the chip. And that S928X chip is actually one of the highlight features of the Dune. It's a pretty modern SoC sporting full 8K 60Hz output, which you can leverage using the Dune's HDMI port. And it also has stuff like hardware AV1 decoding, which will hopefully become a more relevant feature as more streaming services start offering their content in AV1 to save bandwidth. But what's really exciting here is that Dolby VS10 engine, which basically allows you much finer control over the Dolby Vision output parameters of the player, and also brings support for a ton of different Dolby Vision formats, like Profile 7 Full Enhancement Layer, that you would find on 4K Blu-ray discs, without any conversion needed for playback on the Dune. According to Dune, you can just use a BD backup folder made in MakeMKV, for example, or use an ISO file of your disk and get the full functionality of the Dolby Vision enhancement from this SoC. But we'll be sure to dive further into that once we actually test the unit and stream some of our own movies onto it. So for now, on the back of the Dune, we've got a Toslink optical audio port, a 3.5mm audio jack, 8K HDMI, Gigabit Ethernet, a DC power inlet, and a power switch. On the front, we have a nice little screen that lets you see the current time or the progress of your current playback, as well as a little door which opens to reveal a standard 2.5 inch SATA hard drive bay. This can be used by the Dune for local storage of media on the device itself, and it can also be used as network attached storage using the SMB server built into the player, which can actually stream to other Dune devices in the network or anything else that supports SMB, which is a lot of devices. So this is a really neat feature. On either side of the unit, you can also see these nice foldable wireless antennas. And on the right side, we get a USB 2.0 port, two USB 3.0 ports, and a USB 3.0 client port. And this is really uncommon, but it actually makes a lot of sense here. Basically, you can plug a USB 3 Type-B cable into this port, and hook the other end into your computer, and then whatever SATA storage you have inside your player will be shown to your computer as a USB hard drive, meaning you can format it and copy media to it, so on and so forth. You don't even need to hook up power to the Dune itself to use this feature, which is really cool and makes syncing large files really convenient compared to other media players. You could even use this to directly rip Blu-ray discs from your computer into the hard drive of the streaming box, for example. I do wish they would have included a cable for this, but it's a pretty standard cable and not all that expensive to get afterward if you'll be using this feature. And on that note, we do have to talk about the other slightly less impressive aspects of this unit that I noticed, and one of those has really got to be the remote, which for such a premium product was honestly pretty underwhelming. It's a little cheap feeling, but it gets the job done. There's not really much to say about it, other than the fact that if you're in a home theater environment, 
hopefully you have a good universal remote that you can use instead. But while all the aspects of the Dune player itself sound really good on paper, it really comes down to the implementation of all of these features that's going to determine whether or not it's even worth considering. And usually when I hear that someone's gone out of their way to make a streaming box and roll their own operating system for it, as is the case with the Dune players, I start to get a little worried because the interfaces that ship with a lot of streaming boxes outside of the mainstream options are usually pretty bad. So with this in mind, I crossed my fingers and cautiously plugged in our unit here so I could get a feel for it. And I gotta say, I was actually pleasantly surprised. The Dune software was easy to set up, although the visual style of the menus here strike me as looking a little vintage, like a really old Apple TV or something. But I mean that in a really good way. Everything here is laid out really well, and after using the interface for a while, I have a lot of good things to say about it. Once you get past the initial setup, it's going to show you this aggregate list of a bunch of different popular movies and TV shows. And just because a movie is on the screen here doesn't mean I'm endorsing it, neither is Dune. But it does mean that the movie is available through one of the streaming services supported by Dune. And I should make it clear here that while the Dune 8K is technically an Android TV streaming box, the main function here is supposed to be streaming from a NAS or playing back media from the internal hard drive. And I say this because Dune wants to make it very clear that this player does not have Netflix certification. So unfortunately, it can't play back any Netflix content in 4K and other streaming services aren't guaranteed to work either. And this isn't a huge problem for us since we don't have Netflix anymore, but Dune also offers Netflix certified Android TV models for this exact purpose. So if we're supposed to be streaming from a NAS, let's walk through the process of actually doing that. You can add any network folder as a source for your movie collection on the Dune, and what this does is save the login credentials for your NAS on the player and automatically mounts that share on boot. So once that's been done, you have the ability to scrape any of the folders in that share that you added. And the Dune will go through every single file and try to detect the movies that you have on your NAS. All of our movies here are on an SMB share hosted from our Synology NAS. And it only took about 20 minutes to scrape our collection, and it seemed to pick up all of our movies just fine. With those movies scraped, you'll now see your local network storage as an option for playing back any of the movies recommended in the movie section of the Dune interface. And if you're really not at all that big into online streaming, you can just remove the entire online listing, which can also get rid of some of the weird recommendations for movies you'd probably never want to watch anyway. The actual process of browsing through movies on the Dune home screen was really good as well. Since all of the metadata for your movies are cached on that 64 gigabytes of internal storage, going through your collection is pretty smooth, and I like the layout of their interface. In some ways, it reminds me a lot of the Netflix app, and one of the most well thought out features of the Dune interface is how you actually choose files to play. And this goes hand in hand with the scraping of movies as well. Over time, as you build up a movie collection, it's almost inevitable that you'll eventually upgrade a movie. Well, in this case, if you have more than one folder or file on your NAS that matches with a single movie, the Dune will just ask you very verbosely which file you want to stream, and it'll even clearly tell you the file path of each option. And the reason I'm making this such a big deal is because the Zadu players that we reviewed on our channel previously do a much worse job handling the scenario of having different versions of the same movie. They just add tiny little buttons on the movie info screen that you can switch between, and it changes a tiny label that shows you which version of the movie that you're playing. The fact that you're selecting between two different files of the same movie isn't very clear over there. So the Dune definitely did a better job here. And that was my main observation with most of the functionality on the Dune HD as far as the user interface goes. It seems well designed and everything basically worked. One hiccup that we did run into while testing was when trying to install Disney Plus from a movie recommended on the home screen, the player installed Disney Plus just fine, but upon trying to launch it, we got a notice saying that the app needed to update, and trying to update it just made the app crash. It didn't take long to figure out that we could enable the Google Play Store on the Dune very easily, and from there, it became easy to update the Disney Plus app. So, I'm not sure why this happened in the first place. Maybe it was just bad timing and Dune hadn't downloaded an update that had been pushed to the Play Store. 
but the solution wasn't very difficult, so I'll give it a pass. The built-in video player itself was also great. I didn't notice any hiccups while streaming direct 4K Blu-ray rips, even over 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. And of course, if you have a compatible display, you can take full advantage of the Dolby Vision Profile 7 layer on your movie rip. But note that this functionality also requires the player to have an active internet connection, presumably to appease some kind of draconian DRM that will go on to plague us consumers until the end of time. So the Dune definitely did what it was designed to do, and if you want to push it further, they actually offer a lot of other really fun options, like the ability to get root access to the underlying operating system, which really makes me appreciate how open these guys are with their devices. It doesn't feel like some kind of a walled-in garden where you're only meant to use the device the way the manufacturer expects, and there's more value in that than you realize. When you're making this big of an investment, you want to be able to maintain it and use it however you see fit in your setup. But whether or not all this is actually worth the $399 price tag is still going to be pretty difficult to determine, and a lot of it comes down to your requirements as a customer. If you see this panel that allows you to enable LDV output using the VS10 engine, and you have a display or projector where you know this is going to be a big improvement, the Dune is a no-brainer. And I feel like it's an implementation that's preferable over the other solutions on the market. But if it's this versus an NVIDIA Shield, when you don't really have an in-home streaming setup, you're more interested in online streaming, the NVIDIA Shield is a tried and true solution, especially if you're just using a regular TV and you won't get the benefits of that better chip. So it's going to depend on your setup. But with all that said, I still hope you found this video helpful. If you're interested in picking up your own unit, we'll leave a link to Dune's page on the 8K model here so you can check it out for yourself. Let us know if you have any questions down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our future content. And as always, have an awesome day.